Okay gang, let's dig deeper into this world of reactions that we're getting ourselves into. So in this video, we're going to tackle, on the summary guide I made you, reactions 2 and 3. And the only reason why we're doing two reactions in one video is that they are so similar. If you guys can pick up on one big concept in this chapter, this kind of series of videos and series of reactions we're doing, your life will be so much easier and better. Okay, so let's just start off with this generic three carbon alkene, right? So this is propene or propylene. Why they have two names, I don't know. Propylene's the common name. Anyways, here the, here's the first of the two reactions we're gonna do in this video. If you take any binary acid, and by binary acid, I'm talking H bonded to some halogen like HCl, HBr, HI, any of these three. You take any of these three, here's the type of transformation you're going to have. You will have, you will add that halogen to a carbon on the molecule where you would form the most stable carbocation. Let me show you the mechanism and it'll make sense. Okay? Let me just erase these guys. And to be completely transparent and literal, let's just pick HBr. It's a very short mechanism. I think you guys are really going to enjoy its brevity, its uh, short amount of steps. Okay, so if this, if I have my propene and I have my HBr, let's see what's going on here. In the last video, we said these double bonds, right? They're a hub of negative charge. Literally double the amount of negative charge. They're very nucleophilic. They're trying to mess around with anything positive. And here we go, seeing this very tantalizing H+, right? It's going to grab the H+, the double bond will be protonated, and we'll dump these electrons onto our conjugate base, which is Br-, right? So here's kind of what we have. The double bond is gone, but where do we bond the hydrogen to, right? Does this terminal primary carbon get it, or does this secondary carbon get it? And here's kind of the thought process. Give the hydrogen to the carbon so that you form the most stable carbocation on the other carbon, right? I'm going to give this hydrogen to this primary carbon. So this secondary carbon is my carbocation, right? I hope this makes sense. If I asterisk this hydrogen right there, he ends up right here. I gave the hydrogen to the primary carbon so that I formed a more stable secondary carbocation as opposed to giving the hydrogen to the secondary carbon and forming a primary carbocation, right? We know this is the more stable option. That's what we're going to do. Then all you do from there is have your conjugate base, Br minus, good nucleophile, he's gonna come back and attack right there. And the mechanism's done, right? Not bad. Let's do another example, and then we will move on. Well, actually, we'll do two examples, and then we will move on to the other reaction, which is very similar to this one. Okay, let's say I gave you this cyclohexane, and I gave you a little bit of HI. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys that this will be your product. If you don't believe me, let's draw the mechanism. So, first step, this double bond, very negative, very nucleophilic, it's going to be drawn to that H plus in the binary acid HI and I dump these electrons onto the iodine right there. I'm going to draw little ratchet arrows underneath our reaction. Here's what we get. Right, the double bond is now gone. We protonated it. But do I form the carbocation here, or do I form the carbocation there? Obviously, we want to make a tertiary carbocation, right? That's way more stable than a secondary carbocation. And since we're going to form this tertiary carbocation, that means that this hydrogen goes in the secondary position. Okay, now that we've done that, who's going to come back but our old friend I minus? 
that conjugate base we formed in the first step of the mechanism, and he's drawn, he's a nucleophile, he's drawn to this carbocation, he's just going to sneak on in there, and he's going to attack and bond right there. So be careful, right? We're forming carbocations. That means we're definitely kind of vulnerable to um, methyl shifts and hydride shifts, right? So I'm actually going to use my rag because my eraser is getting a little annoying. Okay, so to give you a quick example, if I had, say, this type of, let's do HBr this time, this type of uh, reactant, and we had this thing going on, and we had to predict the product, here, drawing a mechanism might help. You guys can see we have our very negative double bond. He's going to grab H+. Plus. We're going to dump electrons onto Br-, minus, which will be our conjugate base. If I draw our arrows below what's going on up top, here's what we got going on. Let's make a decision. Do we want to form our carbocation here or here? I'm saying not the primary carbon, but let's form this secondary carbocation, which means this primary carbocation on the end, he's the one who gets the hydrogen, right? Just to be clear, because that's kind of the new concept going on. However, we're forming a carbocation. Let's look around. Do we want to move it to the primary position? No, definitely not. We could have done that in the first step if we wanted to. However, we're next door to this very very attractive tertiary carbocation prospect and if we take a hydride and we shift it right over here you can see now he's tertiary right we've effectively we had to actively pick to make the, the secondary carbocation here which allowed us to then shift it to being a tertiary carbocation and the mechanism ends with Br- minus coming back to attack which gives us this product right here. Okay, so again, this is labeled on your kind of summary crash course guidelines to these reactions. The Markovnikov addition of a binary acid, right? That's the second reaction. HCl, HBr, HI, doesn't work with HF. But remember, you protonate the double bond, form the more stable carbocation, then attack with the conjugate base. But beware of shifts, both hydride and methyl. Okay, so, believe it or not, that's the second reaction, and really quickly, I'm going to introduce to you guys the third reaction in this video. Third reaction on the summary guide, second reaction in this video. Okay, so very similar to what we just did, let's just say we had propene again, and you'll see this written two ways sometimes. You'll see this written as H2SO4 and cold, and you might even see dilute, right? You can either see this, or you'll see this. It's the same thing, H3O+. You see either of these. This is a Markovnikov addition of water. And by Markovnikov, this means... Markovnikov was an organic chemist, so he's the one who kind of discovered all this. But you're just adding water this time. Water is your nucleophile. So what you actually get is alcohols, which you get are alcohols, okay? So I'm just saying these are equivalent reagents, all right? So let me show you a mechanism. Let me just erase the whole thing. Here's what we got going on. If we have this, I just like using the H3O+. And here's our product. Here's what we got going on. Remember, this double bond, hub of negative charge. If we have hydronium or any source of H plus floating around, such as H2SO4, we're going to most definitely protonate the double bond. This is the recurring theme in this, this series. Right? Pro grab H plus, dump the electrons onto oxygen. Again, where does the hydrogen go? We're going to put him on the terminal primary carbon right here because that then has our carbocation form at the secondary position as opposed to flip-flopping. Once we've done that, here our conjugate base right here was water, right? If we take H3O plus and deprotonate him, we're left with 
H2O. Well, he's our nucleophile. So come in, we'll attack. I'll do one more step over here and then I'll bring him back this way. That means we now have our oxygen attached to that secondary carbon, a positive charge right there, and we'll have some other water come by and snatch him up, dump the electrons off on that oxygen, and we get our alcohol product. So as you guys can see, reactions two and three, so similar. Instead of tacking on halogens like you do in reaction two, such as Cl, Br, and iodine, all we're doing in reaction three is tacking on an alcohol, right? So if we're gonna do two quick kind of complete the reactions before we close the book on this video, one second, Here's, here are two that we can kind of take a look at. And let's just say, so let's say we did H3O plus here. Again, the same thing as writing H2SO4, dilute, cold. So if I was going to kind of, so remember, the first step is protonate, your double bond. And then you have to pick, okay, which one is going to be my carbocation? Well, I'm thinking this one would. And I think you'll see why once I draw it. So over here, if I draw this carbocation, the first one, the immediate carbocation we would form, it would look like this. And I hope you're thinking to yourself, aha, now I know why Joe did that. Because if we're in this position, we're right next door, to a situation where we can have a methyl shift, right? I could take one of these CH3s, I could plop him on and scoot him over, and then my carbocation would change to, if I draw a little arrow, I would still have the methyl group right here, but then I'd have a methyl group over here, and my carbocation shifts from this carbon to the top carbon, and then when water attacks at this position, after a cleanup step, right, we now have this as our product. Okay? Again, if I were to take this bottom reaction and I were to subject it to some HBr, could be HCl, could be HI. But again, the first step is to protonate the very negative double bond with H+. Again, I'll draw my immediate carbocation over here. Now I get to choose, right? Do I form this carbocation or do I form this carbocation? I'm gonna give this carbon the hydrogen, leaving this guy without a bond, right? Because a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary, as you can see right here. And luckily, no arrangements, no rearrangements, sorry. So then Br- minus would attack at this position right here. And this would be our final product. Okay, gang. You're gonna, I know that was a little fast, but you're gonna see this Markovnikov principle dominate. And the, that, that principle being, double bonds are hubs of negative charge. You give them anything positive, they're gonna grab it. They're nucleophilic. When you do that, one of those carbons in the double bond will get that atom to bond to the positive uh, species. However, the other one is kind of left out and has a positive charge. He becomes a carbocation. You always form the more stable carbocation, okay? All right, that's reactions two and three. Let's see what's ahead.